What does the word Shanghai mean? Today, we know Shanghai as a modern Chinese metropolis. However, dating back to the 19th century, Shanghai is an English slang word that means to kidnap. Uh, well, how does this expression come to be? Let me invite you on to an imaginary trip then. You are a broke worker strolling across the streets of Los Angeles. You simply want to get drunk and、um, escape from reality for a while. Now, there comes a finely dressed man inviting for a beer. So we happily keep drinking with him all night long.、And、then, after blacking out for who knows how long, you wake up and you find yourself on a cargo ship, well, let's see, on its way to Shanghai. And that finely dressed man turned out to be the ship owner, and you are now forced to work on his crappy ship. Clearly, Shanghai as a verb didn't last long. As Shanghai was determined a felony in the year 1915, this word faded from use. What we can see from this instance is the extinction of language on a vocabulary level. But if we zoom out a little bit more, whole languages can also die out as people stop using them or stop passing them down to posterity. During the online 2021 school year, I went across an online linguistics competition called the International Olympics of Linguistics. And in this contest, I was given a word bank of some very remote languages, and I was required to decipher some other language materials using the word bank, in a way similar to the Rosetta Stone. Alongside with the word bank come with the footnote, introducing the language, talking about its source, the number of speakers. I was so struck that so many languages worldwide are at the edge of dying out. One of the exceptions. That we know is the language that is taught here at our school, which is Latin. Although Latin is still learned, written, and spoken by a lot of people worldwide for intellectual purposes, no one really uses it as their mother tongue. The number of extinct languages and endangered languages is increasing every year. Throughout human history, there is thought to be about thirty-one thousand languages spoken. Today. The voices approximately seven thousand languages resound across our planet, but two thousand nine hundred, or forty-three percent of all of them, are endangered. At current rates, about ninety percent of all languages will become extinct in the next hundred years. But how does this, does this come to be? How do languages become dormant? The most common process is called gradual language death, which refers to the phenomenon that. The speakers of one language gradually switching to another one, in order to avoid social discrimination or get higher social prestige. One of the greatest example of this phenomenon is the Ainu people, who live in the Kuril Islands north of Japan. Japan favors building a country of one ethnicity, which is the Yamato people. Under this banner. Regional ethnic minorities, such as the Ainu people, receive minimal amount of social and educational support. Inevitably, the Ainu people realize that they may get better jobs or get more education if they leave their smaller islands for bigger cities, such as Tokyo and Osaka. During this process, the Ainu people gradually lose their ability to use Ainu language and gradually switch towards speaking Japanese. First, they can still understand the language, no problem, but they can't speak it anymore.、And、then, they lose their ability to understand the language totally. Most of the cases, language death happens like this, relatively slow and less obviously. But in some cases, language death happens relatively fast, often due to colonization. For example, the language native to the island of Tasmania was entirely wiped out. During the British colonization wars, but why does it matter? Isn't it making us more unified by speaking only a few languages? That is actually not the case. Instead of being like letters in envelopes that passes factual information, languages are more like books because they not only pass information, but also store culture and historical knowledge. One of the great example of this is the Inca language. As a long-lasting empire that spanned across the South American continent, the Incan people developed their unique medication system based on their language. By blending their knowledge, 
on culture, religion, and the usage of different herbs and minerals. Not only encoding these factual information, the language also includes how the Incan people regard the supernatural forces, because according to their understanding, human illness is caused not only by a lack of physical well-being, but also by the anger of gods. Therefore, in the Incan medicinal language, they also include how different ceremonies can be practiced when taking different medicines. It is all the most amazing that the Incan language is completely oral, which means that this language is passed down generation to generation by simple retelling. If the Incan language fades away, all these cultural heritage and ancient knowledge will fade into the abyss. Now you may ask, how? How can we prevent these cultural heritages from disappearing? Tragically, it may be impossible to stop this overall trend. But from my experience, all it takes to at least slow down this process is our curiosity. As a Shanghai native, I grew up speaking the Wu Chinese language. And it is extremely frustrating for me to acknowledge that the language that I grew up using is fading away. They spoke in the phrases such as, Yo xiang le, as the old man sits by the streets and he popped his popcorn. And also the chanting, Zi zi hu, ba le hu, ya le xiang, ma li hu, as the flower merchants carry the tiny baskets crossing those tiny streets. And also, my grandmother is going to scold me if I misbehave and say, Mong zi xiu lo. Many things have changed in Shanghai. Food vendors have to be scrutinized for food security. Large flower stalls with their high quality flowers and supply chains win over those individual merchants. Many people all over China and even all over the world move to Shanghai to start their new lives, making Mandarin the primary language. Therefore, today's effort on language protection mainly settles on making language archives. For example, that's one made by the Chinese authorities recently and, if possible, teach as many students to speak the language. Now, it may sound so grandiose that, ah, we are reviving languages. But all it takes from us is our little contributions. If you speak an endangered language, go ahead and practice it. Go ahead and start using them in your language communities. Do not let this crucial piece of human knowledge fade in our era of information. And tell the world with your voice at least we can let them know that we are still here. Thank you.